Hello, everyone. My name is Mary Beth Hodson, and I'm the uh, Director of Boarding School Admissions and Senior Partner at Arch Education. Welcome. Um, we're taking a little bit of a, a turn in our um, in our webinars um, this um, spring and um, yeah, spending some time with some schools and getting some more intimate view of um, what's happening in US boarding schools. And today we are with Santa Catalina, um, an amazing girls boarding school in California. So I'd like to introduce the head of school, um, Miss Julie Edson and head of upper school, Miss Julie Edson and Miss Jamie Brown, the director of um, admissions for Santa Catalina. So hi, ladies. Hello. Hello. Hi, Mary Beth. Thank you so much for the introduction. It's, we're delighted to be with you today. And um, yes, I'm Julie Edson. I'm the head of the upper school at Santa Catalina. And uh, I'm also an alumna of the school and was a boarding student uh, when I attended. Uh, and Jamie, uh, you can introduce yourself. Uh, so glad to be here. Thank you so much. I wish it was in person, but this is a wonderful alternative. Uh, I'm Jamie Brown. I'm the director of admission and have been the director going on my 12th year. Like Julie, I am also an alumna and boarded at Santa Catalina and my daughter is an alumna and I live on campus. So Thank you for having us. You are very welcome. In um, in thinking about um, speaking with you again today, I was trying to recall like the last time that I was on campus, it was for the California uh, boarding school tours and you were just building the amazing um, new STEM center, which I, remind me is like five years ago, six years ago. It seems like it was quite a while ago, but when I, when I, you know, hear the girls talking about that, that facility and what's happening, it sounds like it's been there forever. Yes, that's our uh, C2 building, and um, we completed it uh, six years ago, I want to say now, Jamie. And 2017, it was when we moved into it. Okay, and um, it's been a wonderful addition to campus. It, we, As you say, we can't even remember school before it because um, it's just really a hub. Um, we have our robotics lab that's housed in there, all of our, our science laboratories um, and math and science classes all take place in that space as well. And our students just love to spend all of their time that they can in that building. So it's really a, a wonderful state of the art facility and we're very grateful to have it. And they just upgraded all of the aquaria in there as well for our marine ecology research program. And it's looking pretty sweet. <laughs> Yeah, that's fantastic. I'm, I'm, you know, really do want to talk about um, that program because it, it certainly is unique. We actually, you know, when when you're able to come back to Hong Kong, we actually have a picture in our office of um, my partner Jennifer and I in our in our hard hats in the construction site at at that. So it's been right in our lobby. So I hope um, when things open up, you can you can come and see that. So well, we're really excited to um, you know be able to to. Um, bring, you know, Santa Catalina closer to our Hong Kong families. And so, you know, you started talking about the Marine Research Program and we could just dive right in there because I think it's really fantastic and and, and quite unique. Um, so do you mind talking about that? And we can talk about, um, you know, a few of the other signature programs as well. Absolutely. I'm happy um, to start there. Uh, so right, Mary Beth, as you say, we, we have a variety of signature programs at Santa Catalina and MERP or our Marine Ecology Research Program is one of these. And what MERP is, is a three-year intensive focus on marine science. And it begins in the sophomore year or 10th grade. Um, in this program, we use the Monterey Bay as our classroom and really take advantage to our geographic proximity to the bay. Students study in and around the ocean, they conduct their research, they learn by observation, testing their hypotheses and experimenting in the bay itself. Um, and so in the first year, that sophomore year, we focus on sort of the conceptual and technical skills that they need in order to undertake an independent research project in a marine science related field. They also learn in the sophomore year uh, programming language R. And then in the second year, which is the 11th grade, they develop a significant independent research project and they spend the entire year working under the mentorship of uh, two of our PhDs in our science department to do this. Then finally in their senior year, 12th grade, 
present the results of their work at a professional conference in which they're the only high school students presenting and it's a national conference, um, international conference, I should say. So over the course of this three year experience, the students are really engaging in what is uh, a rigorous experiential academic endeavor and they gain the knowledge and the skills which are transferable to any engineering and science field that they may choose to pursue in college. So it's really a terrific program. It sounds great. I mean, I, I loved, is it Dr. Olson who's the um, one of the, the PhD? Dr. Merrick, uh, Lisa Merrick and Dr. Christian Riley are right. the two uh, PhDs uh, who uh, developed, designed, developed and oversee the program. Yeah. They both actually, in the last few weeks, um, received a recognition from our, our local uh, Monterey County Rotary Club as well as outstanding um, uh, educators on the peninsula. So that was also a wonderful honor that they recently received um, as a reflection of, of this incredibly unique program. Yeah, I, lo I loved what you know he had said about, you know, doing the research is, is fa fantastic, right, and necessary. Sorry, but to be a researcher and for science to advance, you need to communicate that, right? And 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 how the girls were going to this international conference, you know, with their, um, you know, their research all documented, and it's just really what, what an amazing opportunity. Um, and you know, I, I, my background is in in girls boarding schools as well, and so I am a, a huge proponent of, you know, bridging that gap, right? And you know, the, unfortunately, there still is a bit of a gender gap in the STEM fields, right, um, for girls. So, you know. Well, really fantastic program. A lot of interest, um, at least with our students in marine science and conservation and ecology. So I'm sure it's a very popular program. It is a very popular program. Um, we have 44 students uh, in it this year across the three you know, levels. And um, we've been able you know, to accommodate all of the students that have wished to participate in it. So that's been really uh, wonderful as well. That's great. And then, um, you know, I'm sure that you are aware, you know, we're all aware that many boarding schools are getting away from AP curriculum um, as it's, you know, quite limited and, and um, kind of teaching to the test, so to speak, right? But it seems like you guys have figured out how to do that um, in a way that, um, you know, allows the kids to kind of get that extra leg up, right, with credit, um, but be able to provide a, a more customized, innovative curriculum rather than, you know, teaching, just having to teach the AP curriculum. Do you want to talk a little bit about that program? Absolutely, yes. And, you know, this is an area I would um, I would say we, um, we've been really trying to find that right balance between offering an AP curriculum, which we know um, some of our students definitely wish to have the opportunity to engage in, um, especially in order to earn those college credits before uh, they get to university. Uh, but also recognizing that there are there's more that we would like to do with our curriculum um, beyond the AP courses. So we've developed advanced topic courses. We, we call them AT courses, and we refer to them as beyond AP. So once a student has completed the AP course of study in a particular discipline or subject, uh, then they can go on to the AT level. And they're really designed, uh, therefore, as our most academically rigorous courses, where students are engaged uh, in college level work. So we offer these AT courses in all of our core academic subjects. Um, and an example of this um, certainly is in the Marine Ecology Research Program, that senior year or 12th grade level is an AT level um, a titled course within the Marine Ecology Research Program. In um, another example of this would be in our history uh, senior research seminars. So these are also for the 12th graders where uh, students conduct an extensive uh, research on an historical topic and they're mentored by a member of the history department. They do this over the course of a semester and at the end they produce a 20 page research paper. Um, so they've really conducted an in-depth um, research project uh, with this product and they learn all of those important skills on how to conduct research at that level in the process. And we also have certificate programs in the arts um, where students who wish to go beyond our three-year art requirement to and do four years of art 
can produce a portfolio or a performance, depending on if it's a visual art or a performing art uh, field that they're exploring. And, and they can earn a certificate in, in either the performing or the visual arts. So between the AT courses and the certificate courses and the signature programs, uh, all of these are designed to give students the opportunity to take a deep dive in a field of interest over a significant period of time where they exercise all of those important high level critical thinking skills, asking questions, investigating, experimenting, being curious, being creative, harnessing ideas, understanding problems and presenting solutions. Wow. A lot, a lot to um, to explore and, and take advantage of as, as a student. Um, when you look ahead, and maybe Jamie, this is a question for you. Um, you know, as a safety optional, like what are you seeing for your admission cycle? Yeah, actually, Julie and I were just talking about this. Um, we will not require it next year that I do know. Whether it will be optional or SSAT blind is still to be determined. We're trying to get a sense of what's going on in our region versus what's happening internationally. We wanna be sensitive to families who may not have access internationally. SSAT is doing a lot to try to improve that service. So for the next year, we know that it's going to be different. So we'll definitely be optional at the very least but we will still require English proficiency tests for those that uh, where English is not their first language. So TOEFL is the primary source that we encourage. And if they don't have access to TOEFL, they can get permission to take Duolingo. So any parting words, Jamie and Julie, for you know any girls that might be interested or families that are thinking just generally about boarding school? Yeah, I guess I'll just say that um, I'm from a family that didn't expect to have their daughter go to boarding school. Uh, It was one of those things where my parents moved out of the area and I stayed. I had no clue what an impact this kind of environment could, could give to me. And then being in this, and I would say that every aspect of our particular model, which is unique, is what accentuates this experience. But uh, I just would do your homework uh, because be informed about what you're choosing and also what you're not choosing. I don't think I would have ever chosen this model just on my own, but in being here, first of all, when you step on campus, there's Santa Catalina has this beautiful spirit to it. Uh, The education, I have never heard anybody say anything, but it is rock solid. So discover something unique that could change your life um, and be open. And then the answer will come. And I think it is very important to to explore your options, especially right now. And this community, you know, it 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 really is um, it really is a game changer. It really does bring in so many different ethnicities, different ways of life, different cultural backgrounds, different ideologies, and respectfully allows people to come together and have very civil discourse. They really able can just. Um, I I don't know. It is is a beautiful place. And I just encourage people to do their homework and come visit us. It's great. And I would just add um, everything that Jamie just said. uh, I absolutely uh, agree. And just to sort of underscore the all girls um, experience is optimal to giving students an environment where they feel much more comfortable to kind of step outside their comfort zone to try something new to um, the amount of support that they receive from their peers when they do that is so incredibly fulfilling to witness. And that camaraderie and that support and that sense of community, I think is particularly fostered in single sex environments. And so um, in addition to, you know, when you're doing your homework um, to really look at um, the differences in in just the environment itself in co-ed versus single sex. Um, so that that would be the other thing. And of course, all the leadership positions in schools like ours are held by all girls. And so there's just an opportunity to lead and to discover your passions at a girls' school um, where you're not sharing that with uh, with boys necessarily. So, and if you want all girls, I'm going to promote. 
coming to California because our location is phenomenal, <laughs> especially with the exploration of marine and, and everything else. So we are the girls' school to attend in the West. So come visit. And you've got a great summer program, which is a good a good taster, right? Um, to get a sense of, of what Santa Catalina is about and boarding and obviously see the beautiful location. So a wonderful you know, way to get to know our school. And we have many, many former campers who end up matriculating into the high school. Yeah, and that's ages eight through 14. So that is, like you said, a precursor. It's perfect. That's mm-hmm. great. That's great. Well, thank you both so much. Um, you. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'd like to introduce um, two more uh, faculty from, from Santa Catalina. We have Ms. Bo Covington, who's the international director, and Mr. Fred White, who's the uh, college counselor. Um, so I'm going to first start with, with you, um, Bo, if you don't mind, um, as the international sure. student advisor. Um, you know, I, I, I know, obviously, from um, working mostly with international students, that parents love when there's an international advisor that's the kind of a, a bridge between, um, you know, home and, and school. So maybe you could talk a little bit about your role um, and share with us a little bit about the international student population at Santa Catalina. Okay. So, um, hi, everyone. My name is Bo Covington. I'm the international student advisor at Santa Catalina. So out of a total enrollment of 220 students in grades nine through 12, 60 are international, 60 are domestic boarding, and 100 are from the local area. So of the 60 international students, about half are from Asia, including mainland China, Hong Kong, Indonesia, Singapore, South Korea, Philippines, and Taiwan. About half are from Mexico. That's fantastic. And so, um, you know, uh, maybe describe your role a bit so that families can understand, um, you know, how you're helpful, um, you know, from the even in the admission side, um, from a student perspective, from a parent perspective, um, and from a school perspective, what your role is within the school environment. For me, I like to address myself as their kind of like a their mom at a school, and uh, which I love to be. Uh, uh, like a second mother, uh, students called me that before. And uh, um, I'm kind of like, um, so especially for the newcomers, definitely uh, it's a new environment, a new, new language. Um, I just want to try my best, do my best to let them feel at home. And uh, I so give, uh, bring them the, the food they, they love and uh, we talk about, so we speak their own language. They, they're gone very soon and uh, they don't need me um, uh, very soon and because they feel so comfortable uh, at Catalina. But uh, I'm still like uh, kind of like uh, contacting parents a lot uh, because um, most parents, especially from China, they don't speak English. So I'm the interpreter and the messenger for them. That's great. That's great. It's so hard when you miss your home food. So I'm sure the girls love when you bring them, um, you know, their special goodies. Um, (laughs) Moving to a little bit more sensitive um, topic, a point of of, um, reflection for all of us, right? And, and, you know, also continue with that anti-Asian sentiment. And I know that many of our families are, are concerned about that. And and, you know, schools are talk, talking about um, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I think that um, our schools, our schools generally, boarding schools have done a really great job, um, you know, even, even before, um, you know, this, this situation. But I think it, it does worth, it's worth a dialogue or at least a conversation about, um, you know, are there any initiatives that Santa Catalina has done to, you know, bring even more awareness to this topic for the population, um, you know, particularly particularly for our Asian students. Yes. Um, Santa Catalina is known for and stands out because of its community. It is a community with many different cultures and our students are selected for and attracted to our program for this reason. Uh, We celebrate that each girl is different and our student body is composed of many different backgrounds, religions, ethnicities, uh, ideologies, But the one thing that always remains true is that how we treat each other and keep other people's dignity intact is what matters most. Uh, Kindness um, permeates in uh, the campus and can be easily experienced when you visit. 
uh, matters of social justice are addressed in our masses and chapel services and in our assemblies and classrooms. Every student is safe in this regard on our campus. For outside of our campus, our surrounding community is also accustomed to a more globally minded culture. Monterey is called the language capital of the world. And people come from all over the world to learn many different languages at either the Defense Language Institute or at Middlebury Institute of International Studies. People often show interest in and respect for different cultures. And there are many different cultural festivals throughout the year. Uh, with the occurrences of Asian hate crimes in the US, here are a couple of examples of how the school responded. Um, there was a formal communication sent to our internal uh, community from our head of school addressing hate crimes. And for newly enrolled and retire, uh, returning families from Asia, we conducted a webinar on May 18th to address a number of questions, but also to address this issue specifically. Thank you for thank you for sharing that. I'm sure that gives a lot of comfort um, to our families. Um, well, I'm sure you are a, a popular ahi, right, um, <laughs> on campus with um, with the the girls from Hong Kong and, and mainland China, and I'm sure a great comfort to the the parents as well. So thank you for for sharing um, everything that you do. I'd like to now um, turn it over to to Fred, right, and Fred. Um, Let's, you want to start with where you start? Where do you start your college process with um, the girls from Santa Catalina? Sure, right. Well, so, uh, you know, at Santa Catalina, we want each of our graduates to go on to achieve great personal and professional success. And that begins with making the best college choice, of course, her, her, her best fit uh, financially, academically, and personally. And we hope it goes without saying that we will pull out all the stops to ensure her best shot at getting into the most selective school she can get into. But at the end of the day, we see this as being about finding the college where she is most likely to thrive. And that's the concept that we build our college lists around. Now, fortunately, with over 2,000 four-year institutions in the US, there are always more than a few schools that meet that description for each student. Now. In terms of when college counseling begins at Santa Catalina, I would divide it into uh, what we might call an implicit phase and then an explicit phase. The explicit phase uh, begins when you would expect it to probably in junior year, but it builds upon two prior years of students work in Journey, our co-curricular program in which uh, each student is guided in identifying her greatest strengths, her greatest passions, um, in documenting her achievements in those areas, and in seeking out new opportunities to shine in. Um, and students are welcome to meet with me at any time during their freshman and sophomore years, you know, for advice on course signups, uh, for instance, or, or guidance on visiting colleges. I mean, we recognize that Many families these days are thinking about college long before the traditional beginning of the college application process, um, and we are quite willing to assist them wherever they happen to be along the way. Now, once the explicit phase of college counseling begins during their junior year, uh, students find that our program is comprehensive. Uh, we partner with an industry leader and test prep to ensure that um, each student gets the best possible outcomes on the ACT and the SAT, which, you know, I should emphasize, even in a test optional environment, you know, good test scores will quantifiably improve students' college admissions outcomes. So we, we still advise students to take preparation for the ACT and the SAT seriously. Um, we employ the state-of-the-art data crunching tool, College Kickstart, in building students' college lists to ensure that those lists are strategic and balanced to ensure that they are backed by those up-to-the-minute local and national admissions data. Uh, we, you know, beyond that, we do research on each student's behalf to ensure that she recruits only the most enthusiastic possible advocates for her teacher recommendations. And we provide extensive one-on-one -on -one editorial support for all of the essays that she will send out with her applications. 
Now, for students applying to the handful of schools where a formal interview remains a factor in admissions decisions, we provide coaching on interview skills. So I, I guess in other words, we leave absolutely nothing that is within our control to chance. Um, I would add, you know, that the Catalina families will report that our communication, you know, is second to none and that it has the effect of making all aspects of the college application process completely transparent um, and has the, the effect of keeping them calm, you know, at a time when their peers at other schools are frequently quite stressed out. Uh, one recent graduate memorably put it this way, we take the crazy out of the process. Um, <laughs> And, and I think that that, you know, that, that neatly captures the, you know, what, what we're trying to achieve here. We do want to take the crazy out of the process for all of our students and, and their families. Um, but to that end, you know, throughout the year, we offer informative talks to students and parents on a variety of topics that are pertinent to college admissions, like financial aid, athletics recruitment, um, the shaping of fine and performing arts portfolios, and, and so forth. And we, we publish a weekly newsletter that always includes any important reminders for juniors and seniors uh, that offers notices of opportunities for summer enrichment programs and scholarships. Um, and that always offers some longer reads from sources like the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Chronicle of Higher Ed. Um, for those uh, members of the audience who, who really want to keep their fingers on the pulse of the national college admissions landscape. Um, and our understanding is that this, this weekly newsletter is actually the most read public, uh, publication that Santa Catalina produces and that it is frequently forwarded on to families at other schools who report wishing that you know, their college counselors were producing something similar. So I think that's a, you know, a pretty broad overview of what we do here from, from soup to nuts. Well, I, I love that you figured out how to take the crazy out of it. Right. After, we'll have to talk more about how you've done that because we haven't figured that out yet. You need to figure out a way to bottle that, don't I? Exactly. You need to write a book. <laughs> Be a great title, Fred. <laughs> um, question, or maybe could you talk a little bit how, about how the colleges are viewing the, the eight kids that are taking the girls that are taking the AT program? Oh, yes. Well, so I think that, I mean, they're, I think they're viewing them very favorably. You know, I mean, colleges, you know, in general, I mean, leave it leave it to schools, you know, to define their, their curricula as they will. I mean, and I think that the essential thing they want to see is that there is a, a range of levels of rigor available. I mean, that there is advanced work available for those students who want to do advanced work. Uh, from no college rep have I ever gotten the impression that we are in any way married to, the, to, to college board products or to AP nomenclature. I mean, they're, they are quite open to, I mean, and the, and the AT nomenclature, I mean, that we have adopted for, college, for, you know, for courses that we've used to replace what were APs um, is really fairly standard in the uh, in the National Association for Independent Schools world. Now, I mean, there are a lot of schools that go with this AT designation for their most advanced courses. So, I mean, I think we're in very good company, and colleges are very familiar with that. Yeah, I mean, I would I would think you know as colleges look at you know academic rigor rigor of where you're um, you, you're where, what school you're coming from that it would be a really nice um, data point for a lot of schools. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, one thing that I'll say about, the, you know, the, the advantage of going with AT is that, I mean, it allows us to um, design courses that are uh, a little bit more tailored to the specific ambitions, you know, and needs of our students and doesn't force us to sort of march in lockstep with a national curriculum that, I mean, it, look, I mean, I, you know, I'm a veteran of 15 years in the classroom and a, a, a teacher of three, you know, at, at various points, different AP courses. I was a reader for five years for the AP art history exam. So I, I mean, I, I'm a big believer in APs, you know, don't get me wrong. Um, but, you know, but the, you know, going, you know, letting, stepping back from, you know, from, from uh, AP courses and going with ATs, I think has given us 
freedom to come up with courses that are in many cases more interesting than those that would be prescribed by the college board if we were just going with APs. And um, colleges don't uh, have any hesitation in, in, you know, in seeing them as at least the equivalents of the APs that they're designed to replace um, if they do not, in fact, you know, think that they might be a little bit more interesting you know, than the APs if they were designed to replace. Probably pretty um, influential maybe in some informing some essays or, you know, expressing um, academic passions as, as well, because they're just a little bit more interesting. Thank you, thank you. Um, well, thank you so much, um, Bo and, and Fred for sharing. I think we're next gonna hear from one of your fantastic students, so thank you. My pleasure, it was great talking to you. You're welcome. And so we've met some fantastic faculty, we've met the head of the upper school, we've met director of admissions, international student coordinator, college counselor. So now we have a live student. So Angie, so great to have you join us. Thank you. Where, where are you um, joining us from? I'm in Hong Kong right now. You're in Hong Kong. So thank you for getting up so early. Oh, no worries. <laughs> so really, really appreciate it. Um, so could we just start off by asking you some questions? I think a lot of people um, um, want to hear from students and, and, and what their process was in, in selecting a boarding school. So um, I guess, where did you go to school in Hong Kong? Maybe give us a little bit of, do you mind giving us a little bit of background? Yeah, uh -huh. I went to Harrow International School, Hong Kong. And were you a, a boarder there? They have the five-day boarding program. I was. Okay. So you already knew a little bit about being away from home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what year did you start Santa Catalina? I started my freshman year, so ninth grade. And um, can you tell us a little bit why you chose Santa Catalina? Yeah. Um, well, at first, my mom was the one that introduced me to the school, so I didn't really research it um, as a lot of my friends did. But... Um, I had my reservations about the school, but then I went on a tour and I think my tour was the one that was the thing that really changed um, how I looked at the school. And I remember the exact moment it was in assembly uh, when we went to see how assembly was like. And I just saw it was just like a typical Tuesday and it wasn't anything special. But then everyone had so, like such a good energy and they were all so supportive when they saw their friends go up um, to make announcements. And I thought that was an environment that I wanted to be in. So I kept looking to the school I, um, and then eventually applied and got in. Isn't it like, you know, when, so you know, we obviously work with um, kids from Hong Kong to um, go to boarding school. So spend a lot of time talking about school fit and, and different schools. And, um, you know, this school has that program, that school has that program, right? It, you know, every, all, all those kind of data points are important, but it's really like, I, I call it the gut, your gut feeling, right? It's like in your perfect example of what that is, is you connected in some way with that experience, right? It wasn't the AT program, wasn't the marine um, ecology research program, you know, the um, the art or the history um, programs. It was it was the community, and and that's so important, I think, for kids to listen to in this process. Yeah, um, the community is such a big part of our um, school, and I think you'll hear us talk about it nonstop because we just love it so much. Yeah, that's fantastic. Any difficulty? I mean, you're you were already at a at a boarding school, so you had a very big leg up, kind of like the kids from junior boarding school. But I don't know, was it what you expected? Um, any surprises? I think it was. I had um, some experience in boarding, so I kind of knew what to expect. But then again, it was um, a full boarding school, so I had to. Um, like I couldn't come back home to do my laundry on the weekend. I needed to be able to last till the next holiday to see my, um, like my family. And of course those were all adjustments and I feel, um, but everyone is kind of in the same boat at school. So you don't feel as if, um, you're an outlier. You kind of feel comfortable that knowing that everyone else is going through the same experience as you and, you just kind of get distracted in a sense because you're doing so many things. You're uh, so interested in 
um, the activities you're doing, the friends you're making, that you sometimes don't even notice that um, you're kind of homesick. Um, but of course, everyone gets homesick at one point. Yeah, the key is to stay busy, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I would absolutely agree. Um, you know, when you think about favorites, right, favorite class, maybe favorite place to study, favorite activity, what comes to mind for you? Well, there's a lot. It's hard to choose just one because we're encouraged to do to try new things, to do things that are out of our comfort zone. So there's not exactly just like one, but I think my soccer team at school and I know this for a lot of the sports teams, they're just such a great group of girls. And um, they're people that I don't uh, have any classes with. They were in like higher grades than me. And I just don't think we would have like that strong of a connection if we didn't have that um, team to get to know each other. And, you know, we weren't, uh, we didn't win every game. And but I've never seen teams lose, but then also get back on the bus and have that attitude to go back into training so that we can get better for each other. Um, and also be able to just have a positive attitude about it. We'll go back on the bus and we're singing karaoke songs like we did when we were going to the game. And uh, it just makes like, um, it it helps me like get my, find my place in the school, just knowing that um, if I try something new, I can, and I don't like it, I can always come back to something that I'm already like, I have like a family, a little like smaller section of a Catalina family. Um, so yeah, I would say my soccer team. That's great. I can so relate. So um, I was a director of an international admissions at a girls boarding school in Connecticut and a lacrosse coach. And, and the time on the bus, like driving back after you won, obviously it's great, right? But yeah. The, the the times when you lost, when everyone you kind of gets on the bus, kind of a little dejected and, and the support that happens on the way back, right? You get off the bus and everyone's just renewed and, and um, you know, ready, ready to take on the next game. So I love that story. Thank you for sharing that. It's really, really, really great. Any like last minute parting um, thoughts or advice for any perspectives? Well, I think that... Um a lot of the students coming, uh, looking at Catalina, they want an academic challenge and, and they're looking at Catalina because they want to push themselves. And that's something I wanted to do uh, because I, I was the sports girl at my old school. I didn't really, I, no one expected me to do anything uh, with academics, but Catalina was the fresh start that I needed to um, break away from that stereotype that I put myself in and other people put me, uh, me in. And then I became the sports person as well as being uh, the academics. I also like theater. I was able to um, put myself in different boxes so that I couldn't be put in a stereotype. And I think if any girls are looking for that, it, when they if they need like a fresh start, I think Catalina is the perfect place um, for you to explore your interest, uh, whether, um, whatever they are. Thank you. Thank you. So it's it such a pleasure to meet you. you um, I, I hope you have a great summer. You're probably pretty jet lagged right now, but I hope you get some downtime. Thank you. And thanks for getting up so early. No worries. Okay. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much, Angie. Yeah. Okay. Bye.